Hey guys, Waggish American here, bringing you another model build. Today, I'm going to be building Tamiya's 172nd scale F51D Mustang. Before I get started on the build, I want to give a quick shout out and big thank you. You've seen him on my live streams, the, my buddy Pincushion, he provided me with this kit. So, thank you Pincushion, and let's get into it. As usual, construction began in the cockpit. I used Tamiya's liquid cement to build as much of the cockpit as I could prior to painting. There were 97 airplanes warming up on the apron, far as the eye could see. Now the first 96 were... I used a custom mix of Tamiya paints for the interior green, basing it off of other modelers' work that I saw online. I honestly don't know what those people base their paint selection on. This was way too olive. To fly, they said, young man, we are very short of airplanes, but we'll get you a something by and by. Now the first 46 are reserved for the majors. The captains have the next 49. There's only one other ship on the end of the apron, said the shave tail, then that one is mine. So he flew over Tejon and the Tegu airstrip when the ceiling be I went back and tried again, mixing a color consisting mostly of yellow green with a few drops of normal green. It could have used a tad more of the green, but the color is far closer than my first attempt and beginning with the dark green gave the final color a bit of extra depth and shading. Then he spied a railroad going in his direction and he said better get there by rail. He flew down the valley and he dodged through the canyon Keeping that train in his sight Till the rails disappeared in a hole in the mountain That was the end of his flight It was old 97 with her nose in the mountain Her wheels set akimbo on the track Yes, her throttle was bent in the forward position, but the engine was facing straight back. Oh, ladies, ladies, take fair warning. From this time now on, never speak harsh words to your high-flying pilot. He may leave you and never return. Beside a Korean waterfall one bright and sunny day Beside his shattered bomber plane a poor young pilot lay His parachute hugged I picked out details in the cockpit primarily with Vallejo flat black thinned slightly with water the words he said I'm going to that better land where the motors always roar Where the eggnogs grow on eggplants in the quartermaster store where there aren't no interceptors and no enemies around they'll be apple pie and rock and rye and the pilots go there when they die in the army air force heaven the pilot lay beside the falls as the medics clustered round and he said it's such a lovely place that's where i am bound crankshaft in his liver and the spark plug on his nose he says i'm flying fast my friends to where every pilot goes I'm going to that better land where the airman rides in style, where the automatic pilot works, and we sit back and smile. There's a girl for every officer, a dozen for the crew. There'll be beds of hay in the old Bombay, and the boys will shout out, bombs away in the Army Air Force heaven. His breath came fast, he couldn't last. With sadness they all eyed him, the medics wept. The tears rolled down, the pools flowed down beside him. The waters rose, they reached his toes, he floated where he lay. And as he drifted out of sight, his comrades heard him say, I'm going to that better land where the flak don't never fly, where bullets are all cotton and the shells are apple pie. Where the clouds are champagne cocktails and you drink them on the fly. Once the black dried, the I used Tester Silver, Vallejo Flat White, and several other Vallejo acrylic colors to pick out the smaller seven. dials, buttons, and other details. Mm -hmm. 
In a Suki Tower, this is Air Force 801. I'm turning on the downwind leg, my prop is overrun. My cool ants overheated, the gauge says one to one. You'd better get the crash crew out and get them on the run. Listen, Air Force 801, this is Itazuki Tower. I cannot call the crash crew out, this is their coffee hour. You're not cleared in the pattern now, that is plain to see. So take it once around again, you're not a VIP. In a Zuki Tower, this is Air Force 801. I'm turning on my final, I'm running on one lung. I gotta land this Mustang, no matter what you say. I'm gonna get my chart squared up before that judgment day. Now listen, Air Force 801, this is Itazuki Tower. We'd like to let you in right now, but we haven't got the power. We'll send the note through channels and wait for the reply until we get permission. Next, I use an old brush to dry brush the cockpit area with Vallejo Light Gray. This is a good color for dry brushing. It works on just about every surface and isn't nearly as overpowering when brushed on dark surfaces such as black compared to a color like white. I guess I should have waited till the landing was okay. Use Tamiya Weathering Master Silver to add wear to the cockpit floor. Off we go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Here they come, zooming to me, our thunder. Adam boys, give her the gun. Down we die. After giving the cockpit a gloss coat, I used Microset and Microsol to apply the decals, which conformed very well. With all painted surfaces gloss coated, I mixed a wash using a burnt umber artist oil and mineral spirits and applied the sludge wash to the painted areas. With the flat coat applied, I finished building the cockpit and glued it into the fuselage side. With the cockpit completed, I glued the fuselage halves together. These fit very well and did not end up requiring any filler. Once the fuselage had set, I attached the remaining airframe pieces, including the lower, upper wings, and the stabilizers. While the primer was drying on the fuselage, I quickly assembled the propeller. 
There were 97 airplanes warming up on the apron, far as the eye could see. Now the first 96... To prepare for the silver coat, I sprayed the entire model with the first coat of Tamiya Flat Black mixed with some Tamiya Gloss Clear. This wasn't nearly glossy enough, so I then sealed the black coat with an extra gloss coat. Once the gloss coat was dry, I sprayed the entire model with several thin coats of Leho Silver. This was then sealed with a coat of Tamiya Clear. Now the first 46 are reserved for the Majors. The captains have the next 49. There's only one other ship on the end of the apron, said the shave tail, then that one is mine. The decals were then applied in my usual fashion and sealed once again with Tamiya Clear. The Tegu airstrip when the ceiling began to fall. The clouds closed down on the tops of the mountains. He couldn't see the ground at all. I then used Flora Models Dark Earth Clay-Based Wash to accentuate the panel lines and fasteners. Then he spied a railroad going in his direction, and he said, better get there by rail. He flew down the valley and he dodged through the canyon, keeping that train in his sight. The rockets on this plane opened the door for some really fun weathering. I built up several coats of Tamiya Weathering Master soot, starting with the path of the missiles and then dirtying up the area in between. The effect looks a bit extreme, but as the rockets are attached, the effect is toned out. I then went on to attach all of the other pieces, which I did not record. Position, but the engine was facing straight back. Oh, ladies, ladies, take their warning from this time now on. Never speak harsh words to your high-flying pilot, he may leave you and... To wrap up the build, I glued down the canopy halves with crystal clear. With that done, the build is now completed. In a Suki Tower, this is Air Force 801. I'm turning on the downwind leg, my prop is overrun. My cool ants overheated, the gauge says one to one. So you better I think get the crash crew out uh, and get. It's a really good kit overall. I I can't tell you how it compares to a lot of other very popular uh, 70 second scale P51s. Honestly, I'm not a big P51 buff, so I don't know much about these. I don't know how many other 72nd scale F51 kits there are. I This is the only one I've ever built, except for the, the, the P51B, the Academy P51B I did as my second build way back. I don't even know if the video is still on my channel. But, yeah, the kit's really good. There are a couple little issues. Um, the rockets... The rocket assembly is a little on the finicky side, but once it's in there, it sticks pretty well. There's actually a bit of de a decent bit of detail in the cockpit. Uh, this was basically a cockpit build. Mo the painting painting wasn't much in this airplane, so most of the video was pro was in the uh, cockpit region. And you saw I didn't add anything. I just painted what was already there. And in a 70 second scale kit, it presents very well. Uh, for Tamiya, the decals did okay. These large ones, like the USAF ones, conformed pretty well. The smaller ones, or the, not the smaller ones, the thicker ones, like the uh, Stars and Bars, they uh, shrugged off my Microsoft, did not want to settle on the panel lines at all. I've heard that the Tamiya decal solutions work better on these, so I'll have to find, I'll have to give that a shot. Next time I'm at my hobby shop, I'll grab one. Uh, there's a couple little inaccuracies. I got to the end of the build and I just didn't feel like fixing them. Like these landing gear door and the inside here should be silver, or a strip of them should be silver, but that's small enough you won't barely notice it. Yeah, the the rocket smoke was really fun. It was a good opportunity to to do a couple tests with clear coats and silver, preparing for a couple special secret natural metal builds. I've got some alclads coming in as well, which will be interesting to mess around with. But for this one, oh, one thing I did want to talk about. Uh, the the magnesium, usually when you do it with alclads, you paint the section by the exhaust pipes with magnesium. Uh, 
I didn't have any darker metal colors, so what I did was mask off the area and mist thinned black paint over top of it. I went a little bit too heavy, but I still think it came out looking pretty good. Yeah, every, besides that, besides those couple notes, it was a very typical Tamiya kit. Everything fit, everything neat, required very little sanding or fixing, uh, virtually no putty used, all the details really good. If you want to build a 72nd scale F-51 to add a little propeller to your Korean War collection, I'd advise you go with this one. It's a really good kit. Oh, there it is, guys. She is all done and ready to be added to my shelf. My first uh, modern, I'll call it, both for me and for the subject matter, 72nd scale aircraft. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to see more and show support for the channel. If you have any questions about anything at all, leave, uh, uh, shoot me a comment. I'm always replying to those. Email too. I, I check that. Don't get very many, but I've talked to a few of you. Pretty interesting. Uh, if you'd like to see the next video, or a video, or... Alright, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!